warm welcome to you all uh, today we can uh, discuss about the artificial neural network in deep learning algorithms so first we are comparing our biological neuron with this artificial neuron present in the deep learning concept in case of inputs in biological neurons dendrites fetch the information from the adjacent neurons and pass them as the inputs here that values of x1 x2 up to xn we consider as the input cell nucleus that process the information here the neuron that process the information then here axons are the cables through which the information is transmitted In case of artificial neurons the informations are transmitted and measured as weights synapses that receive the informations from the axons and this received information is transmit to the adjacent neurons in case of the artificial neuron we are using the output this is the final element here we predicted the output so there are different layers first one is the input layer that picks the input signals and pass them to the next layer so orange colored circles that represent the hidden layer that perform all the calculations that needed to extract the features then it perform the classifications then finally this red color circle that denotes the output layer that provides the final predicted output these are all the main application that a neural network can do number one is a, it uh, translate various text formats then it identify various biometric traits then it helps to recognize various types of speeches then it helps to read uh, various types of handwritten text then it also helps in case of robotic applications an unlabeled image that can be identified without a human interventions here it is a 28 cross 28 image size which we known as a 784 pixels so there are 784 pixel elements are there in this two dimensional image the neural network helps to identify and differentiate various types of shapes basic structure of a neural network we call it as a perceptron the various types of perceptron are a single layer perceptron and multi layer perceptrons this box that takes the input data and process them that gives the output here a square is given and after identifying what is the data it predicted the output as square find out what has happened inside that box are various layers are available so the neurons present in each layer that transmit the information to the nearby neurons to the next layers finally it reaches the output the neuron that present here is associated with some amount of bias function so for every data that we received we can assign some weight that weight is transmitted to the next hidden layers finally the output is predicted in the last layer so now we have to find out what has happened inside these neurons these are all the neurons and these are all the layers that are available in between the input and output layers first it takes the product of every input data and some weight is assigned so that is called it as w1 w2 etc then the sum of the weight products is computed the inputs are taken as x1 x2 up to xn means x1 and w1 is product then it is sum up with x2 w2 plus up to xn into w n that weighted sum is added with the bias element so finally this sum is subjected to a particular function that we call it as activation function three input data are available means x1 x2 x3 so w1 w2 w3 that x1 into w1 plus x2 into w2 plus x3 into w3 plus the bias condition is added finally we can predict the output main types of activation functions are sigmoid threshold then rectify linear unit then hyperbolic tangent function this is a sigmoid function here we are going to predict uh, the probability as the output it exists between 0 to 1 and the function is given by pi of x equal to 
1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus x. First we have to define a threshold value. If it is greater than threshold mean we can take it as 1 or otherwise 0. Rectifier function. The value is positive means we can take in the output or otherwise it is 0. Then hyperbolic tangent function. It is similar to that of sigmoid function but the only difference is it is between a minus 1 to 1 and also the function we can define by 1 minus e to the power of minus 2x divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus 2x. Cost function. We predicted the output but there is some changes between a actual value and the predicted value. So the difference between these two actual and predicted that represents the cost function. Cost function is minimized by making some adjustment to the weight and biases. Now we are going to uh, predict a price of a bike based on some futures available. So here the futures we identify are the CC of a bike, mileage of a bike and that ABS of that bike. So the input layers are X1, X2 and X3. In between the input and output layer, now we are having the hidden layer. This hidden layer helps to improve the accuracy of the overall system. So the first step is to product this X1, W1, then add them with X2, W2 plus some bias function. So after making this, we have to find the activation function of that particular value. Similarly, the weights of W3 and W4 are assigned, then it is processed. W5 and W6, W7, 8, 9 are calculated. After making all the calculation, now we are performing the respective activation functions. Weights for the next layers are assigned as W10, 11, 12, 13. Now we predicted the output that we call it as Y cap and this Y is the actual output. Cost function is defined by 1 by 2 into Y cap minus Y the whole square. Image this cost function as low as possible. This concept we call it as the back propagation. Propagated in backward direction. This is used to minimize the cost function by adjusting the weight. Our first neuron takes the value of mileage and CC as inputs. So it is assigned as W1 and W2. Here it is X1 and X2. We are producting these values then add up with the bias. Then pi of these values calculated which means the activation function. Clearly each of the neurons take a different combinations of input. So N2, N3, finally they are performed with the corresponding activation functions. Processed value from each neuron is sent to the output layer over the weighted channels. Here the actual value is $4,000 but the predicted value is $2,000. C is the 1 by 2 of Y cap minus Y the whole square which is the cost function. So here we can find that the cost function is very high here. Here we are performing the back propagation. So now the predicted value and the actual value same. So cost function is equal to 0. We have to update the weight until the cost function becomes less. How we are going to minimize this cost function? By using this gradient descent back propagation algorithm, we identify the cost function. You see that the ball will row slower if the slope is gentle and it will row faster if the slope is steep. Likewise, here a neuron is trained slowly if the gradient is small or otherwise it will train very quickly if the gradient is large. This is the best optimal solution here. A traffic camera, how identify the vehicle registration plate on the road. Check the speeding vehicles that breaks the law. Image of a car that is now it is fed as an input to identify the registration plate. Here we can see that this is a pixel value of a car that is fed as an input. So X1, X2, X3 are the inputs. Put layers are passed to the hidden layer. Then the weights are assigned to W112, W18. We finding that the summation of this weight into this input plus bias function. Then as the signal flows within the hidden layer, the weights are changed now. Now this W11 here we can assign as while processing W21 up to W28. Here it is calculated and is fed to the activation function in each layer to design which node to be fired. 
three layers we extracting all the features here we identify the plate number so with the help of the object character recognition we helps to identify we capture the data as image and that image value is converted into a text per on the plate is now identify with the help of this neural network so to decrease the cost function and to minimize the error we are going for back propagation concept so that output is compared with the original result with the multiple iterations to improve the efficiency types of artificial neural network the number one is a feed forward neural the simplest form is that uh, ann so the applications are vision and speech recognition then uh, radial based function network it helps in the application of power restoration system then that self organization neural network that helps to recognize a pattern in medical analysis then recurrent neural network here the hidden layer that saves its output to be used for the future predictions it helps to text to speech conversion model then convolutional neural network there is a variety of applications in image and video processing model neural network the research is still going on in this type of neural network these are the various types the following are the various deep learning platforms that we are using the tensorflow keras pytorch and deep learning for java the major applications are building the robots to train them to perform some human functions automatically with the help of the ai they compose musics color image it converts the gray scale image to a color image then with the help of a neural network it automatically uh, translate one language to another if a word or phrase or sentence is given means it can be translated into another language i hope you understand the concept of this artificial neural network in deep learning meet you in the next video till then goodbye from vijay